And I'd like to say welcome. My name is Kim Shear. I'm the Central Interregional Coordinator with New Mexico Mesa. And this is our second annual College and Career Pathways Conference. Thank you for joining us. And thank you to Anu, who is our guest presenter today. Um, we're gonna hear a little bit from UNM African American Student Services. We'll also record this so we can have access to it on our New Mexico Mesa YouTube page. And then I do wanna let uh, people know that I will put a survey in at the end of our session. And I'll ask that you fill that out as a guest. And guests this week, if you're at two or more um, events, have the chance for some gifts and prizes through a raffle with our state coordinator, uh, Anita Gonzalez. So why don't I hand it over to you, Anu, and you can share some information. And as I mentioned, we're recording as we go. Okay, so good afternoon, everyone. My name is Anush Moye, and I work for the African American Student Services Center here on campus at uh, UNM main campus in Albuquerque, New Mexico. So I was a formal student athlete here at UNM. I played football from 2015 to 2019. And now I serve as the student service specialist at the, the African American Student Services Center or AKA as we go by the FRO. So today I'm gonna to be talking about tools on how to navigate through college. And I'm just gonna give you little tips and tools of what you can do to navigate through college if you're a first time student or if you've been a, if you're a returning student or if you've just been here for a while, you just wanna get some tips, that is my job. So this video that I'm about to play is just the video of the fro and you know what goes on and what different events that we have so it's it's not much audio coming in it's just music so if you can't hear anything it'll be that would be fine so i'm just gonna see where that people hello to everyone who just joined my name is anu and i'm gonna play a video of the fro <laughs> can see you because you are in fact beautiful, okay? So what service do we offer our students who are, and what service do we offer to anybody who's a community member as well? So some, some of the important services that we offer is academic advising. That's one of the, our top services that we offer to all our students. So academic advising is helping students 
getting ready for classes, helping students, you know, register for class, helping students understand what classes they need to apply for to, to get to enroll to for their degree. And also just, you know, helping students, you know, figure out what degree programs works best for them and what they want to do in life. And other services, we have tutoring services and CAPS is something I'll go on going to later into this presentation. We offer emotional support, financial support. We also offer employment opportunities through our work study, our work study program. And we also have a mentorship program. That's how I got into this uh, role is through the mentorship program. And we have different student organizations that I will go into later into the presentation as well. And then there's other events that goes on as well. So the three main objectives that I'm going to touch today is time management, using campus resources, and building a resume. So what is time management? Time management is the process of managing time by understanding how to use time wisely in the sense of, so, so things to think about when you're making time management or when you're trying to use time management or even when you're thinking about time management is making an agenda, setting goals, short and long-term goals, working on one thing at a time, starting your day early, setting breaks within your time management schedule and limit the things that you commit to as in you should not want to build your time management schedule. You should not want to build your schedule with a bunch of things that you just can't accomplish in a day. And you should like stretch out your days to where it's comfortable so you can be less stressful. So this is an example of student A. I jump one is gonna, we're just gonna say student A. This is what student A's time management schedule looks like. This is how he goes on with his day. And this is what he considers his time management schedule. So 8 a.m. he attends class, 10 a.m. he may have class again. And then at 12, he has lunch, 3 p.m. he goes back to class, 6 p.m. he has dinner, 9 o'clock is, 9 p.m. is, you know, time for study, and then 10 p.m. is bedtime. This student has a very structured, you can say semi-structured schedule, but when you're talking about time management, you want to talk about going into depth and actually just utilizing every minute hour second of the day and you just you want to put everything in order where it doesn't become overwhelmed like one thing that is different from this student a than student b that we're going to look at is the way he studies he studies one time a day and like studying and he only studies for for one hour a day and when you're in college you're going to need a lot of time to study since you're not going to be in school as much as you were in high school because when you're in high school well, where I'm from in Texas, when we're in high school, we're in high school for eight hours a day. So I would assume that that's how it is everywhere around. And the biggest transition from coming from high school to college is the time piece, the time management piece and using your time wisely. Because some days you're gonna have class every day, some days you're not gonna have class and you're just gonna, you're gonna have to learn how to navigate and use your time wisely. So this is student A schedule. Now let's look at student B's. Student B schedule. 7.30, he has breakfast. Eight o'clock, he studies for two hours. Then at 10 a.m., he goes to class for one hour. Then he has lunch for approximately, he just has it scheduled for one hour. Only You don't really know how long lunch is going to take. And then he, he may have to go to work for four hours in a day at 12 p.m. And then at 5 p.m., he has free time before his next class at 7 p.m. Sometimes you have a night class. Then he has class for two hours. Then he has dinner at 9 then he studies again at 1 p.m. He studies again for one hour at 10 p.m. And then his bedtime is 11 p.m. The difference between student B, which is this person, and then the student that we just saw earlier, student A, is student B is using his time more wisely and he's having an effective schedule. So he's planning out his day more than student A does this thing. He's going to class and studying one time a day and he just has lunch. But student B has studied when he, after he eats breakfast, the first thing he does when he wakes up is, is study since he knows he has time for when he wakes up to go to class. Instead of using that time to lay in bed, he can wake up at 7.30, eat breakfast, and after breakfast, eight o'clock, he goes and studies right before his class. 
And then after his class, you, you can take your lunch break at whatever time is more convenient for you because everybody's schedule is gonna change and your schedules are supposed to be built around your class schedules and the things you have going on. So the difference between student B that we see now and student A is that student B has a job. So he has to incorporate working into a schedule. Student A has more time and more flexible time, but student B who has less time than student A, let, he has less flexible time than student A is using his time more wisely because he has a strict schedule that he's following and he's not trying to accomplish it may look like a lot, but he's not trying to accomplish too much things in a day. He has he has two classes and he has work that he has to go to for four hours in a day. That's his only, th that's his three main big things and everything else is just trying to fit into a schedule because the free time, you should have free time built in your schedule because having free time gives you an opportunity to, in case something comes up, in case something happens, you have that free time in your schedule to handle that. What some people try to do while building a schedule and about using their time is they try to fit so much things in a day and then they realize they only can accomplish maybe three to six things in a day. And you can't accomplish so many things. And, and when you put so much things on the schedule, you're more, you're more likely to accomplish the things that is not much of a priority rather than the thing that is really a priority. So, so what does time management look like? As we just seen, time management looks like creating a schedule that is easy to follow. You don't need something that has 20 things to do on a list. You just have something from between five to 10 things to do that's just simple. You know, making the list of classes, like as we saw from student A and student B and events that you wanna attend. So. That's where the free time comes in play. So if you have any on-campus events, because when you go on to camp, when you, whenever COVID gets back down and campus goes back to 100% in person or everybody starts attending campus again, there's gonna be a lot of on-campus events that go on and you're gonna to want to attend that. And what gets people's behind is they don't set their time, they don't set a schedule that's, you know, they have time to attend events. So they go and attend an event and then they don't have time to study. So that's where the free time comes into play. And then have a flexible room to work with, as in, as we see that goes into the free time and lunch time and things like that. Reading the syllabus is probably the biggest thing you can do when you first start the semester because reading the syllabus will, of each, not just one class, but each class will give you a breakdown of what the semester is going to look like for you, what assignments are due, and when they are due, how many classes you're going to attend in a day, how many classes are you going to have in a week. So reading the syllabus is just one of that's one of the big things that is going to help you with college, and also one of the big things that's going to help you with your time management and building your time management schedule. And setting a schedule and committing it, committing to it is also a big thing too, because a lot of people will set a schedule and then after the first or second week, they will just you know not follow that schedule. But if you wanna be a very successful college student and you wanna graduate on time and do the things you wanna do and you wanna have the, the grades you wanna have, setting the schedule and committing, committing to it is gonna be something that you're gonna to wanna to do. And using to plan out schedule sessions and assignments when they're due. So that falls into reading the syllabus because when you read the syllabus, you're gonna know when assignments are due and it's gonna make everything easier for you. And this is also the importance of utilizing time. Just gonna to touch a little on these things is you'll be able to properly, you will able, you'll be able to prepare, properly know when things are due as in reading the syllabus. So that's one. You will feel less stressed and overwhelmed by schoolwork. So that also falls with, with it will also fall in the category of you will know when things are due. And it also falls in the category of reading the syllabus because whenever you know where things are due, you'll know how much room you have to work with to submit that assignment. And you won't, and assignments won't pile up on you and you won't, you will feel less stressed. You will have more time to do activities that you love. That also falls in the free time that I was talking about earlier. You'll be more productive. And that's a big one because people 
tend to think that if you put a lot of things on a schedule, you're productive, but sometimes you're less productive because you put so many things on the schedule and you will just, you put 20 things on the schedule and you only probably have time to accomplish four of those things rather than you putting five things on a schedule and you're accomplishing all five of those things a day. And you, you will spend less time revisiting works and assignments. That is a big one because that's one of the things where it says, do, where I said earlier in the presentation, do one thing at a time. Because when you do one thing at a time, you don't have to revisit uh, an article that you read, a paper that you're typing. Once you open the paper and start the paper, you should finish the paper so you can move on to the next assignment so you won't have a lot of things. And that also falls in the category of you feeling overwhelmed because if you start trying to do a lot of things at once, that's when the stress level goes up and you start feeling overwhelmed by the school activities that are going on. And the fun one that everyone loves is you will have more time to sleep because we all of our sleep. And when you get into college, you're gonna realize sleep is important. You're gonna really want to sleep. And getting a good night rest is something that is, you know, that's good. And it's something that helps with your studying and it's something that helps with your retention when you're learning. So the next important thing that I wanna to touch on is the importance of using on-campus resources. So there was a study back in 20, what was it, 2016? And the study was about the difference between students who were involved on campus and stu students who were uninvolved on campus. Like the st students who had involvement on campus, they performed better academically because they received support from teachers, staff, friends, peers. They, they received support and they had, they, they also built relationships with staff and peers and which helped them and motivated them to, you know, to keep pushing when times go tough because college is a very stressful place. And as you, when you start college or anybody who's already attended college, they will know that college is a very stressful place. So that's why, you know, in getting involved with on-campus resources is something good. And with students who were like uninvolved, they, they had poor performance academically than students who were involved. And they, because the reason why they had poor performance was that they had fewer support relationships with friends, faculty, and administration. So, so the different campus resources that UNM offers, that most campuses offer as well, but this is just the name that UNM has it. We have the Student Health and Counseling, aka the SHAC which helps with student health and helps with anybody you know who feels overwhelmed or needs to see counseling, that's them. We have our Women's Resource Center. Also, we have our LGBTQ plus resource center that helps with that community. The African-American Student Services Center, the FRO, which is where I work at. And then we have our CAP Center, which I talked about earlier with the tutors. So the CAP Center is the Center of Academic program support. So they're, the, they're a center on campus where if you're having struggle, if you're having issues with a math class, a science class, uh, what is it? Chemistry, biology, engineering, uh, algebra, stats, anything possible, like any class you're taking, if you're having issues and you need a tutor, you just contact CAPS. They can set up a tutoring session and you can get UNMs, it's free to all students. I don't know how other universities do it, but I would believe that other universities have it free to their students. So CAPS is a very beneficial thing because sometimes you may not understand something in a class. You may not understand the way the teacher is explaining it to you, but sometimes you, you need somebody else. Like you will understand it different if somebody else you know, explains it to you because they'll approach it in a different way and that would be more beneficial for you. So CAPS is a very big help and a big thing for anybody who's gonna be attending CAP, gonna be attending college. And we just call it CAPS at UNM. Like I said before, I don't know what it's called at any other university, but it's called CAPS over here. And local respect, that helps with any domestic violence issue that you may have, any like, personal issue that you may have, you can always contact Local Respect and they'll give you the advice that you need, they'll give you the resources that you need and how to go around with different issues. And the Office of Equal Opportunity, Opportunity OEO, which deals with Title IX. So if you're having trouble in class, if 
you feel like you're being harassed by a professor, you know, anything somebody said, a, a bad remark to you or anything in that area, you go towards their office, they'll help deal with that. And that's the office and the resources that you can use so you can get the help that you need. So a little statistic, students who are involved on campus, they're three times more likely to be considered for a job because that's where it comes in building those relationships with the staff, building relationships with students, you know, building those different relationships and networking. You're 80% more career ready than other students. And that's once again, building those relationships. Once you build relationships, you understand your career and your field and you can build those relationships with, with people. You have transferable skills that is gonna go to your resume. And these resources can help with personal issues as mentioned in the slide before about Lobo Respect, the Office of Equal Opportunity, uh, Women's Resource Center, LBGTQ, like they, they can help with any personal issues you may have that other people and other staff members or advisors can't help with. So that's why using on-campus resources is good. So the last thing I wanna to touch on, I don't wanna to take too much time is an academic resume. So an academic resume is a resume that is built up of academic history that a student has. And the reason why that's good is because you learn how to show, like the reason why building an academic resume is good because you learn how to show people your academic achievements. So how to build an academic resume, what goes into an academic resume. An academic resume, like the first thing that goes into an academic resume is your personal profile. We'll, the next slide, we'll touch on that and see how, you know, how to build an academic resume and what goes into the personal profile. Then you have your education, like what have you accomplished from like, what are your education accomplishments, your academic accomplishments? Like what have you, what degrees have you got and things in that nature? Do you have your academic coursework? Like what have you done academically? Like what academic achievements that, you, that you've got and, and different things like that. And then your other professional experiences goes towards the bottom. And also towards the bottom, you also have your, uh, your different certifications. So if you have, uh, certification in Microsoft Office, you can put that on there. If you have any uh, typing certifications, you can put that on there. And just different small things. And also towards the end, you can, there's a volunteer work that you can put on. So any community, community service that you do, you can put that on your resume and different things like that. And also like, if you're involved in any uh, on-campus organization, student organization, you can put it on there because that's also considered professional work in a sense. So, I don't know if you can really see this on your screen, but the first thing that's on the resume, you have to put your name. You always want your name something big and not too flashy, but something where they can, when they're looking through resumes, they can see your name and say, okay, this is this, this is student A and this is student B, you know, differentiate yourself. Then you put your address. And after you put your address, you can put your contact information. So your phone number, uh, your email, sometimes you can put uh, your social media uh, tag, like your Twitter, Instagram, but that's not required for most jobs, but you know, you can put that on there if you, if, depending on what job you're applying for and they wanna see your social background and stuff like that. So the first part, the uh, summary of qualification is going to be, that's where you're gonna put your, your personal profile. And in your personal profile, you're just gonna describe yourself, describe what job that you're that you wanna that you're looking for, looking forward forwarding to attend, and just just things in that nature. And then and then the second bullet will be your education. So you will always want to start off with your most present educational level. So if you so this one that says twenty to present. So let's just say you graduate this year, you're gonna to wanna to put 20, what is it? 2017 to 2021 is when you attended so, uh, University of New Mexico and got your degree in business administration. And then if you've got a, an associate's degree from a community college or any other degree, you'll put that 
at the bottom, but you always want to start off with your most recent degree or education achievement. So you'll put your degree and then maybe you'll put, if you, if you, let's just say we all graduated, we'll just put our degrees and then maybe we can just put our high school at, at number two. So the academic coursework is like, what have you done academically? Like what group projects have you worked on? Like what group organizations have you been a part a part of? Like this, this anything that you've done academically that is, you know, that is that is qualified towards a job or something that you know that's I don't want to put this something that is like something that that shows that shows the person reading your resume why they should hire you or what does this academic coursework have to do with the job I'm hiring in a sense. And then your relevant experience, like what jobs have you worked that is relevant to the job? So if I'm applying for a job at, let's just say PESCO and I'm trying to be the logistic manager, but say I've worked at uh, McDonald's, you just, you can put McDonald's if you worked in like inventory, because if I'm trying to be the logistic manager at PESCO, I'm and I worked at McDonald's, but I worked with inventory that correlates. That's something that, you know, correlates with that job. Inventory and, and logistics, they correlate with each other. So that's something good. So language, what's that? Computer slash technology skills and other employment slash volunteer experience. That's everything that you put at the end of the academic resume, just to, you know, show the employer how diversified you are, you know, the different skills that you hold, what you bring to the table, and just, you know, the small things like your community service, like how much are you involved in the community, how much work experience do you have, like other than any work that's relevant to the job, like different work experience if you've been working since you're maybe 16 or so, and just the small things like that, that's something that you can put at the bottom. So the importance of building an academic resume. One of the most important things is for that is you're able to track your progress. So you're able to see on paper like what you have done academically and like you know what you have accomplished throughout your career and being in school and stuff like that. And another thing is it can give the employer a good understanding of what you've accomplished academically because you know what you have accomplished, but by putting things on a paper and putting it on paper and putting it into a resume format and shipping it out to employees, sending it to employees, em employers understand, okay, this is what he's done. They look at the resume and said, okay, this is what job correlates to this. This is the type of experience he has. This is what he, different skills he has. And this is the different things that he brings to the table. So that is the end of my presentation. I hope everyone's learned a little about how to navigate through college. So if there's any questions, you can type it in the chat. If you, is there any questions that anyone has? Because if you don't wanna speak up, you can type it in the chat and I can read it out. And I will put my, my uh, contact information in the chat right now. Great, thank you so much Anu. That was really insightful information to hear. I loved your overview of time management. I wish I would have gotten that information before I started college. And um, for those of you who joined us, Anu mentioned he was a college athlete, correct Anu? You were a football player? Yes ma'am. Well, once you're a football player, you're always a football player. So you must have had a really good sense of time management with practices and team commitments. Yes, I, I can say that because, you know, being a college athlete, that's time, at college, that's how I've learned how to use my time management. That's where I learned was being a, by being a college athlete because when I was an athlete, I had to wake up at six o'clock in the morning so I could be there at 6.30 breakfast. After 6.30 breakfast, I had seven o'clock meetings and from seven to 12, seven to about 11, we had practice meetings. And then from at 12 o'clock, we'll start my first class and I'll have class from like 12 to maybe three, some days three, some days five. Then after that, go to study hall. And then after study hall, Got to go home, shower, eat again, and the cycle continues all over again. So that's honestly where I learned how to get my time management from. Yeah, and I loved how you mentioned that a schedule actually helps make sure you have extra time for friends 
or activities that come up, going to a game or something fun that you, a college student might want to engage with. Uh, your other tips on getting involved and building a resume. If uh, any of our high school students haven't seen a resume before, that was a great first look at one and a good format to encourage, you know, even writing down that you're a part of this college and career pathways conference is a great knowledge for someone that may be hiring you that you're willing to go above and beyond. And of course, getting involved in your community. I knew mentioned he was from Texas, but we still got him here in New Mexico. He's involved in our community, that's for sure. So I know it can be a little scary, so I'm going to leave a big awkward pause and encourage any bravery from our participants, or again, you can put a message in the chat. Very scary, very scary. <laughs> well, I I've just put our survey in the chat and that is for our attendees. We can stay online for a few more moments. Uh, Nua is obviously uh, very intelligent and bright and knowing what's happening on campus. And that was just a lovely presentation. I hope that um, the students here got to enjoy it and that some students in the future will link in online as well. So students, please make sure you fill out that survey. I'm gonna pause or put myself on mute in case anyone wants to speak up for questions. I got, I got a question for y'all since y'all have one for me. Like, so I know some of y'all probably don't want to speak. It is what it is. But if you can put it in the ch chat, like, uh, what do you plan to study when you go to college? Mm, that's a hard question sometimes. I like how though, um, we often always focus on that question, but once you're at count college, like getting involved in organizing your schedule, it, it's like the focus that you take is certainly the main path, but there's lots of other people and communities and places to be on campus. Mm. Well, I don't think we have any questions, Anu, so I wanna thank everyone for joining us. I'm going to end our recording right here. Maybe once we're on.